Set amid this delightful countryside, yet within short distance of the sea, is our destination, Stepaside. This national park, created in 1952, has of course those special residents. But a park with a difference, one that slopes down to the sea. From Wiseman's Bridge, our thoughts into the water take us back, back in fact to the year of 1943, where Sir Winston Churchill spent much of his time discussing, planning and counter-planning the D-Day invasion from these beaches. The calm waters now are no longer troubled, except possibly for the yachtsman. For him, it's a haven. Our thoughts indeed go on. On, in fact, from the beaches of D-Day to Saundersfoot and along the quiet leafy lanes by car, a quiet detour. Saundersfoot is perhaps the warmest little village in the country, sheltered in the corner of Carmarthen Bay. prosperity today of Saundersfoot is no doubt dependent on tourists, as indeed the yachtsmen. As all along this magnificent stretch of countryside, it is a wonderful haven for the yachtsmen and boat enthusiasts. Further north is Amroth, and here again the beaches were used for the British landings in France during the war. Further north still, we come to Pendine Sands, famous not only for enjoyment on the beach, but for the motor enthusiasts who will no doubt remember the excellent thrills that Sir Malcolm Campbell gave us in days gone by. Not far from Swansea is Oystermouth, better known as Mumbles, a popular little resort and an attractive place with an almost continental flavour.
small little craft predominate over the whole of the village. On again by road, our journey was to take us to one of the larger towns, to the famous Tenby, almost the capital of the Pembrokeshire coast. Although large and, and a very popular tourist town, still retaining the quaint old charm of the narrow streets, where one can spend hours looking at the antiques and the various tourist attractions that one can buy in the various shops. But at every turning, the sea is not far to hand. And here, the main harbour wall at Tenby, built in the reign of Charles II. This surely is a seaside playground for the boat enthusiast as well as the sand digger and bather. The large rock standing in the centre of the picture is Goscar Rock, almost like a sentinel on the beach. For a quieter and more leisurely run, go, as the guidebook tells us, over 16 miles and 17 hills, and you cometh to Newgale. Here, clean seas, fine sand, and this is surely a gem. And so, to the smallest city in the British Isles, St. David's, a village of only three streets. And here, the famous Cathedral of St. David's. Standing in the centre of this small little village, Cometh City, and there the medieval ruins of the Bishop's Palace, now famously preserved for all to see, in their fine grandeur, and what a perfect setting. On again by road, our journey was to take us to Fishguard, a fine panorama view showing the industry blending into the surrounding terrain. For here is a very important terminus for the Irish cross-channel services. What a magnificent national park this is, varied, undulating scenery, offering a choice of wealth for all to see. Like so many of our other national parks, this is surely one to be proud of and cherish. We'll